As we've mentioned, today is National Puppy Day, so a perfect time to talk about the health of your dog. What do you do if you discover lumps or bumps on your dog? Veterinarian Dr. Danielle Spencer David is here to talk about the causes and treatment options. Good morning, Doctor. Good to see you. Good morning. I see you grabbed a puppy. Look at who I have here, <laughs> little Edie. Could and hardly tell she had surgery. Oh, she she was just spayed, right? Yes, just spayed. And what great. people should do with their young dogs. Absolutely. That's actually a good preventative, <laughs> you know, leading into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the season where we're all hugging on our puppies and, you know, we feel sometimes maybe a little lump or a bump here and there and we just don't want people to be alarmed. We want to give them, you know, some details how to go about finding out what they might be. Okay, let's talk about some of the benign bumps, the things mm -hmm. that are, are not a problem, but they might cause you to say, what is that? Right. And usually if you find a lump and say, it's been present for you know maybe a couple of weeks up to a month um, if it seems to be bothering the pet um, if it's kind of freely movable around the skin of course you want to go in just to see it could be a cyst it could be an abscess many times pets get bitten by an insect and that can turn into an infection so it's not always something malignant but mm -hmm that is always a possibility as well. And there are actually some growths that kind of go away on their own. For instance, with younger dogs in particular, they can have some little viral warts around their mouths and mm -hmm. it usually goes away in a couple of months. I know in some dogs, they have those little fat pouches underneath and, and yeah. what causes that? And that's not a problem, is it? Well, a lot of times, especially with the middle-aged dogs, mm -hmm. they can have little fatty lumps. Uh, we, I know about and, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, kind of a part of, you know, getting older. Mm -hmm. And um, usually, most of the time, they are benign. Mm -hmm. So the only problem is if it's in a location where it interferes with them moving around, so around the armpits, and or sometimes even around maybe their private areas, you know, those are the times maybe to have them removed, or if they get extremely large, which mm -hmm. they can. So how do we diagnose the, the normal ones from ones that might be potentially problematic? Right. Normally, the easiest method, your vet will stick a little needle inside of the lump and look at it under the microscope, send it out to a pathologist, and the results come back fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. And it's um, fairly inexpensive, too, as compared to surgery. What are we <laughs> looking at? I know, it's oh, the so other noisy. puppy. Where's the baby puppy? <laughs> but um, that's actually the easiest method. And it's not, you know, painful to the pet. It's like a little prick. And you get the results back within usually 24 hours. Let's talk about the, the lumps and bumps that are a little bit more serious. What, what are we talking yeah. about potentially? Well, we could be talking about a, a type of malignant cancer. Um, and certainly in that case, it's always best to have a biopsy first to diagnose what stage it is. Um, and certainly consultation with um, a veterinary oncologist would be best because after that, usually there's surgery, possibly chemo and or radiation. So definitely want to you know, consult with your vet and see what's the best thing to do because there are several different malignant types of cancers and those are the ones we want to get on top of very quickly. That's got to be tough for both the pet and the, the, the parent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, what is, if they do have to go through that kind of treatment, what is the, the kind of post-operative care for that? Well, um, many times it's almost like um, after having anesthesia, like this pet, sometimes <laughs> they don't even know the difference. Um, but certainly you want to keep them rested. You want to make sure you're looking at the surgical area, um, maybe over a couple of months, make sure there's no recurrence, for instance, of the growth. And also just monitor for any additional growths that can occur. Mm -hmm. And Excuse me. How should we be monitoring for these problems? Well, anytime you, you feel on them, if you see, <coughs> um, feel any lumps at all, you know, first you want to see how long it's been present because some lumps, as I said, kind of go away on their own within a couple of weeks. Um, <coughs> And after that, if it does tend to persist, if it's discharging material, those are indications to definitely take the pet into the vet and have them analyzed. So how should we be monitoring ourselves? How, how do we do kind of a massage? So what you do is um, you just do a normal um, pet down over the top first, um, and then also all the way down to the tail, and then also on the legs. And you can feel any type of a raised area at all. And also on their belly, 
just kind of going right in between their little armpits here, especially in the armpits too, because they have lymph nodes in this area. So you want to feel in there and then also around the neck. You want to make sure that there's no enlargements over here in their head. But normally, pets, just because they're so nosy, sometimes they'll get little lumps right around their muzzle. So you want to monitor that area in particular too. And then also their little feet, because they can sometimes have little growths even in between their digits. And she likes the massage. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love massage too. Well, some great tips, Danielle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, puppy. <laughs> This is such a sweet puppy, and this terrier mix puppy is not just for decoration or for a prop. It is available at the Richmond Animal League, and we'll post a link to all the details on our website by early this afternoon at wtvr.com slash VTM. Look at her. She's so sweet. I think she likes you, Daniel. I know. She's fine. <laughs> we might have another one that you can have.